our next talk is going to be on git for workflows and this this talk is uh, there's a lot of material in the slides and you only have 15 minutes to cover so david give me a heads up if i'm exceeding our 15 minute slot okay uh, but uh, to get started uh, so now we talk about something called as git workflows and hold on for a second okay so what will we do in this presentation we'll attempt to understand git workflows and look at git workflows of different complexities uh, we all know we a lot of people use git and a lot of our you know you attendees out here might be using git git is an open source version control system that is uh, used very widely for code development or to essentially track changes in any set of files. And to make it clear in this talk, we are not really going to go through Git basics. Rather, we'll talk about Git patterns or Git workflows, as you'll see. Why are we talking about Git workflows? You know, we all have distributed teams. We work as a part of distributed teams, multiple people working on different aspects of the code. And our goal usually is to collaborate in an effective manner and in a sustainable manner and to ensure that the software is, you know, we are developing the right code. And Git workflows can help us immensely when for, for collaborations in some of these goals. So first thing to know about Git is that uh, Git is a decentralized version control system. However, you can use Git in many different ways and patterns or workflows. And the simplest pattern or simplest, simplest workflow is to use Git in a centralized manner. And that's called as a, uh, you know, when you're collaborating via Git in, in this simplest manner, it's called as a centralized workflow. This slide gives some details on centralized workflow, will go really fast, as I said, but we've tried to put URLs and pointers on the slides so that you can you know go and get more information and this atlassian slash big big bit bucket url has quite a bit of information on on, uh, on workflows and centralized workflow so as said uh, the simplest way to use git is through centralized workflow similar to how uh, we use svn uh, you have a central re repo and everybody checks out that central repo on their local machine now in Git, the default development branch is called master and all changes that we do are committed uh, to master. People can check out the master, make local modifications and commit back those changes. However, of course, issues arise when there are you know, more than two, three people working on the same code. Uh, some people prefer working locally on their machines and like to commit once a month. Some commit more frequently. Uh, so you, you have multiple people working on the same repo and on features that are in different stages of development. This of course will lead to code conflicts and breaking the code. So instead of everybody just working on one master repo, wouldn't it be nice if there was another copy of the central repo, right? And uh, that's where that's where this concept of branches, pull request folks, uh, all our Git workflows and all of, all of these can essentially help us to, to develop our code more efficiently. So Git, so, uh, so as I said, there are like uh, centralized workflow does not work well. And uh, we will go through branches, PRs and folks as three different types of workflow mechanisms that that will probably help uh, help us use centralized workflow better. Let's talk about branches first. Branches are independent lines of development. A developer can essentially make a copy. A copy is called like a branch in Git terminology. So you can make a branch of the master and work on that branch. And different team members in your team can do the same. The advantage of having multiple branches is that if you break your branch during development, other people are not impacted and your master branch is not impacted and therefore protected. Eventually, when, your code, when you are ready to add your code, uh, when your code changes are done, you will uh, need to add those changes to your master from your branch. And so, so that the features of your code are exposed into the main code and other team members. 
And the way to do this is called merging. So you can develop on a branch that you name as development or testing. And once your work is done, you can merge it into the um, master branch. Branches are you know, a very, very um, um, initial concept uh, that everybody who uses Git, they know about it. Now with Git branching is very easy. When you're working on your project, uh, you need to make good decisions about what branches you want, what branch names you want, what is the scope of work that will be done in those branches. And uh, be a little careful about how much complexity you want in your branching. You should aim to keep your uh, branchings, branches reasonably simple uh, so that a team with uh, diverse Git expertise can use it productively. Product productively. The good thing about Git is that uh, there are more complex branching models available for your team to use. And experienced users can individually take advantage of this extra power that Git offers to make themselves more effective. And the entire team does not even have to be aware of Git features that these experienced um, users are using. Now I want to talk about feature branches. This is a branch that is created specifically for adding some feature to your code. And when that feature is completed, the branch is usually merged with the main master or main code, and then this feature branch is deleted. You can create feature branches also specifically for uh, fixing, fixing bugs. So see the example out here. You have two people, Alice and Bob, and they are working on the same code. Alice creates a local feature branch called Add Solver. Bob has a local feature branch called Issue 151. They have both created these branches from the master. They work on, uh, you know, but when Alice created her branch, she uh, used the latest version on the master was commit C. Bob, when he's created his branch, the latest commit was, you know, version commit B. And therefore they are working on different versions of the master. Alice and Bob make, make changes. Now, to understand this example, let's say that Alice decides to push her changes to master before Bob does. And uh, so now the, the master has Alice's changes, which are DFGI. They are all changes that Alice made. When Bob tries to merge his branch, he has a conflict between his commit and, and the code in the master branch that perhaps Alice put. So now what does he do? He will have to take some action and additional steps uh, to resolve this issue. So as I said, what can, what can Bob do? Bob will essentially have to uh, rebase uh, his, his commit. And initially when Bob created his branch, issue 151, he had created it from commit B of uh, the master. Now he will have to rebase it so that uh, it's, it kind of starts from the latest commit in master, that is commit I. Once he does the rebasing, if there are no additional conflicts, then he can merge his code and push them into master. And, uh, and then he can choose to delete his branch once done. So, uh, so this, this is, these are something called as feature branches. And they are a very, very common way in which Git is used, which workflow is used. Again, look at the Atlassian Bitbucket URL if you, uh, if you need like a more insight into this. So we spoke about feature branches and how they are short-lived uh, and you delete them once, once the work is done. But there exist other branches in the main repo that never get deleted or seem to have infinite lifetime. For example, your code may have branches called production or development where the production branches strictly has straight stable code and the development branch may have work in progress code. Each branch may provide a different environment and that's actually a big advantage of Git. So you can, uh, in this example out here, you can see that the add solver branch did not merge directly into master. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but the add solver branched, merged into development. There were many commits to development. And then when everything was settled, it then merged, uh, merged into master. 
Let's talk a bit about PRs and pull requests. So let's say your team is working on a feature branch. When each feature is done and it's ready, ready to be merged, you use the method of pull request to, to merge it into a PR. Pull request is also called as a PR. A pull request tells the owner of the code that there are changes being proposed. So you, you make changes in the feature branch and then you uh, create a pull request. The pull request will get reviewed by the owner maintaining the code and the owner will probably discuss things with you or not. And based on you know, the, the conclusion, the owner may accept your PR in the main code or may reject the PR. And pull requests essentially are a feature that makes it really easy for developers to, to act to collaborate. One more important concept that we should really talk about is GitHub fork. Forks are a very important concept. So they're essentially a copy of your main repo. If you've, if you've used GitHub, uh, it's very easy that you make a fork and a, and a repo is copied from the original account to your account. One big advantage of folks is that you only need read access to the main repo and you don't need write access. So you can fork a read only repo, you can make a copy of it in your GitHub account, and then you and your team can work on this forked off copy. When you are done, you can push the changes to the main repo, but usually to push the changes, uh, you create a PR, you submit the PR, the repo owners will look at the PR and accept it or reject it. And this working model allows anyone in the public domain to become a full contributor to a code uh, while the main repo maintainer can uh, ensure that only valid stuff gets added into the code. So, so far we've looked at the centralized workflow and how things like PR, feature branches, folks can help, help us with it. And uh, that's one time that there are, uh, now we'll, now we'll look at more complex, some more complex workflows. The first three listed here, that is a Git flow, GitHub flow, GitLab flow, they are generic ideas. And then we'll talk very briefly about the Trilino scientific package workflow a bit. Uh, Git flow. So what is Git flow? Git flow is a branching model that emerged uh, shortly after Git itself emerged. What is a branching model? When you have a team, you want to ensure each member is following a set of steps so that you have a good and well-managed software development process. Git flow is one such branching model which tells what branch names and semantics you can have so that you have a good workflow for code development. Git flow is very good for timed version releases. And it's very good if you, you know, maintain multiple versions of your software. At its very core, uh, Git flow says that you should have two lifetime branches, master and master branch and develop branch. Master is the production branch. When you, when you start writing features, you will have your feature branches. And once your feature branches are ready, you will merge them into the develop branch. When the source code in the develop branch reaches a stable point and is ready to be released, then you merge it into master, and then you can tag it with the release number. So in addition to feature branches, you can have hotfix branches, release branches, and they can all be merged into develop branch before it goes into master. So your master is always in good shape. Now note that this hotfix branch, release branch, feature branch, all these branches, they're just names given to the branches so that it's easier to create semantics around them. From a technical standpoint, they are all just simply branches. Uh, we don't have more time to go into this, but this link out here, right, for a blog, this has really great, um, uh, this is good information about Git flow. We, we are short on time, so let's speed through GitHub flow. So GitHub, GitHub flow is an alternative to Git flow. And this, this uh, link of the blog or, or the website has, again, very good information out here. GitHub flow is a simpler Git workflow, and it's easier for, for people to pick up and start working with it. Now, it's very good for a team where, uh, where you have a culture of pushing code into production machines every day. If your team has a culture of constantly testing and deploying code, a lot of companies like GitHub use this process, and that's why, that's why it's called GitHub flow. 
the rules for GitHub flow are different. Anything uh, in the master branch is deployable. So if you have to be, the team member has to be very, very sure that they don't end up breaking master. Feature branches are created from the master branch and they are put into the master branch directly. PRs, pull requests, when somebody's working, they open a pull request early so that people can co collaborate and you merge through master, two masters uh, through the pull request. Pull requests obviously have to be tested thoroughly before merging. And then you deploy the master as soon as possible, you know, once the code is there. The third uh, flow we will look at is uh, GitLab workflow. GitLab workflow emerged because some teams did not want Git flow and Git, GitHub flow. They did not want to base off features of the developer branch. They didn't want so many branches. So GitLab emerged. And in GitLab, uh, the way it works is all the features and the fixes, they first go in the master. Master is considered to be the staging area. So everything goes into master. But when you want to put code into production and pre-production, you have additional branches called production branch, pre-production branch. And code, mature code from the master will go into this production and pre-production branches. And then that gets deployed. If you have bug fixes, hot fixes, they go in the master branch. And then there, things are cherry picked from the master branch to these downstream branches called production and pre-production. So each of these three workflows, they have their own spaces depending on the team requirements. The Trillino's workflow out here uh, that you can see on the slide, it's a test-driven workflow. It's used by the Trillino scientific team. Here, what, what they do is that they have feature branches that start and end with the develop branch that you see in green out here. All changes to develop must come from Git pull requests. And once the PR is created, you will have to test it. And then the feature branches are merged and eventually things go from develop to master. So everything coming in master is coming from develop branch and therefore there's no merge conflict. So this is how a real life scientific application uses, uh, uses uh, this workflow. So this is, this is somewhat of a last slide, but uh, I want to speak a bit about considerations when you're choosing a Git workflow you should always have a clear set of policies to ensure that you have correct code somewhere in some branch. Usually it's the master branch, but ensure that you have policies and rules how to, as to how to commit and merge in these branches. Choose a Git workflow that is easy for your team to communicate and be productive, easy to learn and follow. See the culture of your team, the experience level of your team, maturity of your project uh, before choosing a workflow. Avoid the temptation of adopting a complex workflow if your needs can be met by a simpler one. And ensure that you have policy document that states the rules and workflow that your team is expected to follow. So with this, I'll end, uh, end the session here and David, I'll give control to you.